There is nothing impossible to him who will try. These are words attributed to Alexander the Great, a man who in his short life changed the ancient world in a profound way. At just 30 years old, Alexander would be king of the known world, but just two years later he would meet his end under mysterious circumstances. Alexander the Great was a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon and one of history's greatest military leaders. He is best known for his conquests of the Persian Empire, which spanned from present-day Turkey and Egypt to the Indus Valley and present-day Pakistan. Alexander was born in 356 BC in Pella, the capital of Macedon. His father, Philip II, was the king of Macedon and was a brilliant military strategist and politician. Alexander's mother, Olympias, was a strong-willed woman who was fiercely protective of her son. As a boy, Alexander received a classical education from the philosopher Aristotle who taught him about politics, ethics, and science. The young Alexander was particularly taken by Homer's epic poem, The Iliad. It is said that he was always accompanied by a copy of the tale, especially on military campaign. Undoubtedly fascinated by the acts of the hero Achilles, perhaps drawing on these heroic deeds to inspire his own, Alexander inherited the throne of Macedon at the age of 20, after his father was assassinated by the trusted leader of his own bodyguard. Historical sources vary on the motive of the assassin, but many believe Alexander's own mother had a role to play in the great king's death. Looking to unleash his fury on the conspirators, Alexander set his sights on his father's political enemies, the Persian Empire. In 334 BC he led a massive army across the Hellespont into Asia Minor. At the core of Alexander's mighty army were the Macedonian phalanx, well-drilled infantry clad in bronze armor and armed with long spears and round shields. Many of these men were veterans of his father's campaigns and were already fiercely loyal to their king. Also accompanying the young king were the companion cavalry. These mounted warriors were often the sons of nobility that had come of age alongside Alexander, training with him since they were boys. Alexander often rode at the head of this cavalry unit, inspiring great feats of heroism and sacrifice from his men, feats that were often key to the many victories won by Alexander. He also had a strong navy, which he provided a great logistical advantage to his forces. Though many of his ships were Macedonian, his navy was also bolstered by Greek allies that were keen to serve and earn favor with Alexander, keeping him focused on his goals in Asia and away from their cities on the Greek mainland. A fearsome warrior in his own right and marching at the head of a war machine primed for war and conquest, Alexander combined strategic excellence alongside a bravery and reckless abandon that would shock his foes on the other side of the Hellespont. True to form, Alexander's first major victory came at the Battle of Granicus, where he defeated the Persians and took control of Asia Minor. He then moved on to conquer the cities of Miltus and Halicarnassus, and in 333 BC he defeated the Persians at the Battle of Issus, where he captured the Persian king Darius III swiftly becoming the premier power in the Near East. Alexander continued his conquests, taking the cities of Tyre and Gaza and eventually reaching Egypt, where he founded the city of Alexandria and was welcomed as a liberator by the Egyptian populace. Undefeated and unsatisfied with his conquests for far, Alexander was revered as a god by his new peoples. Much like his heroic idol, Achilles, Alexander had ridden into unwinnable battles and come out completely unscathed. Not only that, but with large swaths of land now under his dominion, Alexander was quickly becoming king of the known world. With knowledge of lands previously unknown to him, Alexander turned his attention to India and found himself faced by new enemies with armies of elephant-mounted troops. He defeated the armies of the Indian king Porus at the Battle of the Hydasts in 326 BC, but this was by no means a one-sided victory. Although the war elephants of Porus were eventually outmaneuvered by Alexander's nimble cavalry, the Indian troops fought with a bravery and ferocity previously unseen by the Macedonian king. He granted Porus his freedom and returned his lands, treating him as an equal. Despite his many successes, Alexander was not without his flaws. He was known for his arrogance and his tendency to be impulsive, which sometimes led him to make rash decisions. He also struggled with alcoholism and was known to be prone to violent outbursts when he was drunk. As a product of his many victories, Alexander's empire was vast and difficult to manage. With his health fading, the empire that he and his father had dreamed of was poised on the brink of chaos. With no named heir, conspiracy gripped the ranks of his once loyal followers. Alexander died in Babylon in the summer of 323 BC at the age of 32, after a series of illnesses. The cause of his death is not certain, but some believe that he may have been poisoned. He was succeeded by his half-brother, Philip III, but Alexander's empire was too large and too unstable to be maintained by a single ruler. His empire was divided among his generals, who became known as the Diadochi. These generals fought for control of Alexander's empire, 
leading to a period of conflict and instability known as the Wars of the Diadachi. Long and bloody, these wars carved out the new dynasties that would go on to rule the East and Mediterranean for centuries to come. Despite his short reign, Alexander's conquests had a significant impact on the ancient world, as they spread Greek culture and ideas throughout the Middle East and Asia. He founded a number of cities, including Alexandria in Egypt, which became a major center of learning and culture. The city was home to a library and museum that attracted scholars from all over the ancient world. Alexander's legacy can still be seen today in many ways. His life and accomplishments have been the subject of numerous books, movies, and TV shows, and he is remembered as one of history's greatest military leaders and a true king of kings. His conquests and the spread of Greek culture had a significant impact on the ancient world and continue to be studied by historians and scholars today.